Ready? Hmm. Okay. Good evening, all. Myself, Ms. S. Devi, working as an assistant professor, at Department of Civil Engineering, KPI Institute of Engineering Technology, Coimbatore. On behalf of Civil Engineering Department, I welcome you all for today's session. It's my privilege to welcome our third guest of our today's session. This is our Kavita. Completed her B. M. E. Structures from Diagraja College of Engineering and B. E. Civil Engineering from Kadapa Chettiar College of Engineering, Karikudi. After M. E. She started her career as a lecturer in Vikram College of Engineering, Madurai, for 1.7 years. Later, she joined in Larson and Tubro Construction, her dream company. Experience as a design manager in Chennai with 10 years. Now, currently, she is working as an assistant professor and placement trainee with four years of experience in KPI Institute of Engineering and Technology. She has a wide structural design experience in uh, Apollo OMR Hospital Buildings, Delhi International Airport, Salala Airport, IT Buildings, Substations, Service Buildings, Coal Handling Projects, and Institutional Buildings, etc. She has wide knowledge in softwares also. Now, I hand over the session to Ms. Kavita. Ma'am, you can take the session, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening to all. Uh, today we are going to discuss about how to prepare the Excel sheet for the. Actually, today we are going to discuss for how to prepare Excel sheet for isolated footing and combined footing and for pile. Actually, in the earlier days they used to do mental calculation. Then later on they have used Excel sheets. People using the thing is they're using the software directly become billy values because in giving an input automatically this are not no no all that we have to cross the refit to this excel sheet link so that as i today for form so was a staff the eta so we can do so then say all can do foundation whatever it type of foundation whether it is actually combined or up or raft or mat whatever it can do the so only using the software and thing we have to consider is we are uh, doing that uh, that part. we are giving the tiny the part and we are giving that machine pro cooked are giving proper cooked it put it is not uh, uh, so properly the thing is you are doing that a higher axial load and higher moment so it may be failed in shear or uh, uh, for that bending also it may be sorry little bit network problem i think so uh, so the thing is sometimes we are getting uh, sometimes we may get error so all the error normally we use to check this uh, all this perfect through excel sheet okay so we are going to check how to, what are the inputs that is required for the foundation and what are the checks have to do those things, those things we are going to do. 
So for normally for this foundation design, it is a isolated footing. The, this we I am taking for one of that uh, uh, steel structures. Normally uh, above ground level that steel column it will come. So below ground level, if you take, it may be a pedestal. Then below that pedestal, we are providing that foundation also. So above ground level, it is a uh, steel column. Then below it is a pedestal. Then below that, it is a isolated footing. That example uh, today I am going to discuss. So what are the inputs we have to give? Just uh, we are going to see. First one is your grade of concrete. Whether it is a M25 grade, or M30 or M20 because nowadays we are using minimum grade of concrete itself as M20. So minimum grade of concrete itself as M20. So for uh, here I am choosing the grade of concrete as M25. Okay, so FCK we have to give input as 25 megapascal whether it is a Newton per mm squared or megapascal. Then next one is grade of steel. Since it is a, we have to check it for bending and shear force, we have to take grade of steel as Fe500 because normally we used to take for stirrups only Fe415. So, so we have to check it for uh, this bending and shear. So I'm taking it as Fe500. So FIS 500 megapascal. Then another one thing is unit weight of soil because the thing is, above that footing, again, we are going to backfill that soil. So that load also you have to consider when you are designing your foundation. So that you kilonewton per meter cube, that it depends on the density of the soil. Here I'm considering 18 kilonewton. Then safe bearing capacity of the soil. Normally, based on your uh, soil profile, you will get that SBC. It may be ranges from 100 to 1000. So here my case is 600 kilonewton per meter squared. So I'm taken as 600 kilonewton per meter squared. Then the next one is this depth of the pedestal and width of the pedestal. This depth of the pedestal is nothing. It is your size of the column. So suppose if you are taking some I section column, it may be ISMB 500 or ISMB 225 or ISMB 300. So accordingly, you have to provide a pedestal along that uh, direction of that column. So here I am taking, uh, based on that column, I'm taking that width of the pedestal. So I'm taken as 300 by 600. That it depends on your width of the flange and uh, uh, depth of the flange also. Since it is a steel column, I have taken the pedestal as 300 and 600 mm. So this is next one is length of the pedestal above footing. So this is nothing. Once it is below ground level, again, be, uh, below ground level only we are going to excavate, isn't it? So that below ground level, the depth of the foundation is 2.7 meters. So uh, here uh, again, this length of the footing I'm taken as 1.5 and width of the footing as 1.2. So this is a random uh, dimension I'm taking. If it is not safe, again, you have to resize it. You have to change the size also. Okay. So based on that, this area also, it was calculated. So if you take 1.5 by 1.2, this area of footing, it is calculated as this length and breadth. So 1.5 into 1.2. It was calculated. The next one is this depth of the footing. This depth of the footing is 150 mm. So I'm considered as 400 mm. That is also based on the designer's requirement. The next one is effective cover to steel. Normally this for that uh, foundation, the normal cover we have used is for normal isolated footing, it is a 50 mm. If you take for uh, this pile cap and all that minimum cover itself, it is a 75 mm. Here I am taken as, here I have taken as, here I have taken as uh, 60 mm. Because this is again your cover plus your die of the bar, it will come. So I am taking this cover as 60 mm. Then next one is this your uh, effective depth. Effective depth is nothing. Your overall depth minus this effective cover. So that also I have taken. That also I have considered here. Then moment of inertia. Because when your pressure, because main thing is in your foundation, you have to calculate your pressure. That your pressure is nothing. What is that low you are applying? That will come as Come, uh, that pressure it should be in your SBC. What we have given this is should be there. That pressure it is 
due to your axial load and also due to your moment also. So if you take this pressure, so again P by A plus M by Z. M by Z is nothing. It is your moment of inertia. You have to calculate based on the, the section more or less. That is at X axis nothing. Your BD squared by 6. So here breadth of the footing is this 1.5 and 1.2 cube by 6. Similarly, you have to take for Z axis because when you are applying your load, you will get an axial force and you will get here I am showing that axis. Once, once you are getting that axial load, that P you will get. Then again, in any software, if you take, you will get X axis and Y Z axis. If you take STAT Pro, it will give X and Z. X is always your X direction and Z is always your Z um, Y direction. But uh, if you take E tabs, it will give you calculation. X is always X and Z is always Y. So what you are getting is that moment also you will get along this X axis, you will get one moment as M X X axis and the Z direction will get M Z Z axis. So both that moment also you have to consider while you are doing your foundation. Okay. So this moment is I'm taking here that so you have to consider when you're calculating your pressure, that due to load and moment in X direction and moment in Z direction. Why we are using this Excel sheet is the thing, because when you're doing manual calculation, you can check for only one load case. But when you're taking your model, you're applying one, not only for only one load case, you're applying N number of load case. Because yes, the it is for dead load plus live load itself, it is specified as 1.5 times of dead load plus live load. When it comes to seismic or wind load, it, it was given as 1.2 times of dead plus live load. Live load, when it combined with live load, it will it was given as a factor of safety as 1.2. When it is combined with uh, um, only dead load plus uh, wind load, then you have to design it for 1.5 times. Then for seismic load also similar cases. So you, you have a N number of load cases. So for that N number of load cases, you can't check it manually. That's why we are going this Excel sheet. Okay, so for, for that, we have to first, you have to check what are the normal load cases, it will governing load cases. If it is a steel structure, normally the loading uh, governing cases will be always, it is a wind load. If it is a concrete structure, then always your governing load will be dead load plus live load plus seismic load. If it is a steel structure, dead load plus live load plus wind load. Okay, so those loads, you have to check it. What is that maximum load it is coming? Then maximum moment it is coming. For that, you have to check all your foundation. Okay, so um, the, you have to calculate that ZXX and ZZ. Then uh, after that, you have to calculate that weight of the soil above the footing. Normally above footing, you have that backfill soil will be there because you are excavating some portion. So again, you are going to backfill. That load also, it, it is going to be act over that footing only. So that load also you have to consider when you are designing your foundation. Uh, either it is isolated or what type of foundation you have to consider. The next one is this is the weight of that footing. Weight of footing is nothing. Again, your self weight of footing. Whatever that uh, length into breadth into that thickness into unit weight of concrete, if you put, then that weight of footing, it is coming. So that's what I'm giving that LZ and that BX into G17 is nothing, your depth into unit weight of concrete. Okay. And these are the normal load cases you are getting from the analysis. One is dead load plus imposed load. Then dead load plus, imp for that dead load plus imposed load, you will get, um, axial force, then moment in X, X direction, then moment in Z direction also. Then when it comes to uh, seismic load, then you have to check it for, for dead load plus live load plus seismic load. But the thing is, when you're designing your foundation, don't take factor of safety for your pressure calculation. Do it for dead load factors dead load plus live load and one times of dead load plus live load plus seismic load or one times of dead load plus live load plus load. For that load cases only you have to check because since it is a foundation you have to check it for only serviceability case not for the limit state of collapse. Okay, so axial force uh, you are getting that from 
your model either it may be a stat pro or for that uh, etabs you have that take that joint reaction in that joint reaction for that column each column point you will get some axial force and that moment so for the dead load plus live load what is that axial force and moment you are getting that you have to type it then for dead load plus live load plus seismic also it is occurred in both the direction the uh, it, uh, x direction as well as in z direction so that load cases also you have to consider and for that you have to calculate that what is that axial force and that moment in x direction and moment in z direction similarly for seismic z direction also you have to consider px mx and mz so these are the normal load cases you have to check once if you check this one then automatically you have to calculate that dead load plus live load case the dead load plus live load case is nothing first you have to calculate p by a so p p by a is nothing your axial force divided by that your area this axial force is nothing you have to add all your force because uh, all your column load that column point it will come then that it also you have to consider then above that footing you have to consider that soil weight also so this all मोमेंट यू विल गेट द axial force because all your moments it will be converted into only axial force so that uh, in that case you can maybe put it as that moment also in z uh, other uh, uh, direction moment as zero but when you are giving fixed condition then automatically this moment and all it will come okay so that moment in x direction and z direction you have to put so accordingly you have to calculate that pressure so p by a that pressure you have to calculate for this normal dead load plus live load so when i am checking this one all your pressures are within the limit because my pressure is only 294 but my capacity is what is that safe bearing capacity what i had given is 600 so everything is within the limit similarly i am checking for dead load plus live load plus seismic load so p by a plus m by z x m z i by z r z z so p is same thing only p is i think Here for that dead load plus live load seismic load, I'm three ninety two point one six. This load plus self weight of the uh, footing, then weight of the uh, soil above footing. So all these three loads you, ha you have to add it. So divided by that area, that moment also for this load case. What is that moment? That moment you have to consider. So here it is considering is only seven point nine four. So the seven point nine four divided by that z. xx so all this value you are calculating so everything it is coming as safe or if your design or foundation when coming with the seismic load is basic capacity you can increase by 20 at two itself just so that also you can multiply here with 25% suppose if i am checking i am here giving us some 200 Okay, if I'm giving two hundred, then I'm checking this foundation. See, it was given us revise the size. So you have to revise your size. So size that size you have to get two by one will be sufficient. Okay, then you have to revise your size. If it is safe, then you have to keep as it is. So here it is six hundred. So still, if you want, you can reduce your. Foundation size also. So most of the people can you can you may ask my uh, SBC is six hundred, but here pressure it is coming maximum is at three eighty nine. Why can't I reduce my foundation size? Okay, you can reduce it. The thing is that pedestal itself is hundred by three hundred, and another thing is since it is a steel that pedestal, if you are giving lesser than that, sometimes what happened is you uh, above that you have to give a pedestal uh, with a bolt connections also that base plate with a bolt also you have to give then again that uh, some clear uh, from that column pedestal to this edge of the footing some minimum dimension we should give so that's why here that is 300 by 600 column so at least that minimum distance 
it should be like your thickness of the depth of the footing is 4 mm so at least you have to give 400 400 so 400 plus 300 700 700 plus 400 it is 1100 that is one that means when you are taking your shear you have to take it at as the d from the face of the column you will check shear so that it won't be sufficient so at least you have to give what is the thickness you have provided that much distance you have to give from the column face so that's why this column uh, this footing size is 1.2 by 1.5 it is in within the uh, bearing capacity so everything is safe so next one is this is your foundation so this is 300 column this is 600 that is pedestal yeah about that only that steel column it is coming okay so this is 1.2 1. onus you will get the pressure because what we are calculating is here that maximum pressure and that minimum pressure because due to this mx moment you are getting this 287 maximum and minimum is 251 when you are taking this mz direction you are getting a maximum pressure of this 371 and a minimum pressure of 171 so based on that pressure always for your moment calculation you are have to calculate your pressure at that column face so here you have you are having a pressure 371 and here you are having a pressure 171 so at that column face you have to take a pressure here so if you are taking this interpolate this value because this dimension is known it is a 1.5 then 1.5 minus 0.6 divided by 2 uh 1. it is 900 mm so 900 divided by 2 it is almost 450 mm at the distance of 450 what is the pressure you have to calculate similarly in this x direction also at the edge of the column you have to calculate the pressure so you are calculating this x direction as 311 and y direction as 274 that that pressure you have to calculate that also in that excel sheet you can do it okay so that interpolation formula also you can give it as a formula and you have to design that uh, pressure also then next case is so once you are calculating your pressure then you are, you are going to calculate your moment so that moment is it is like a overhanging beam it is na it is a overhanging beam because here it is a support so this is one support here it is free hanging and here it is also free overhanging so for that overhanging it is like a free overhanging of cantilever beam so this pressure into this distance wl squared by 2 that you will get a moment in this direction so that wl squared by 2 i am calculating here or here in moment so this don't moment you have to calculate that mu by bd squared if you want to take this mu by bd squared you can take otherwise you can write your that uh, 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 0.87 mu is equal to 0.87 fy ast into d into 1 minus ast based on that also you have to calculate that ast in that ast you have to calculate it anyway whatever it may be you have to do that first calculation also so based on that area of steel you have to provide a spacing also okay whether it is a you can provide if you want 12 mm uh, or 10 mm if i am giving some 10 mm okay then spacing also it will get reduced then you have to provide 10 mm at 167 you have to round it off to 150 mm you have to round it okay likewise you have to design it for both uh, moment in x direction also you have to calculate and moment in z direction also you have to calculate okay so both direction you are calculating and you are getting that moment also and uh, based on that that area of steel was also calculated then next main one is always when you are taking your foundation it will be passed for that bending bending always it won't be it will be safe only okay it won't fail for bending because always if your sbc is if you are getting your pressure within the sbc then automatically that foundation also it will be safe maybe uh, you are provide ding you may provide a higher dia with lesser spacing so that the main uh, failure may be it may be happen due to shear only so always that shear you have to take it at d from the face so the d from the face when taking this is your pressure so you have to calculate for your maximum pressure you have to calculate so for that shear 
Then you have to calculate tau V is equal to VU by BD. You have to calculate. Then based on that tau V, then you have to whatever that maximum both because you are providing X direction, one area of steel and Y direction, one area of steel. If you are taking here better in foundation, both the direction you have to provide same steel. Okay. Don't change the steel. Don't change the steel in foundation design because it it won't it won't be act like a like a slab. Okay, normally uh, uh, people mindset will be always like a slab. Uh, for the shorter span, it will be a main direction. Okay, but in foundation, it will be a reverse case. Wherever here your your span is more in that direction only, you will get a maximum bending moment and more steel also it will require. The thing is, because your cantilever projection will be more here. When you take a shorter direction, your cantilever projection, it, it may be less. But in this case, that both the cantilever projection is only 450 mm. I think so, uh, it, it will be safe only. So that available, so based on that maximum area of steel, you have to calculate for that PT, you have to calculate that tau C. Okay, so then you have to check tau V is less than or tau C. If it is safe, then no need to revise your uh, footing thickness. Suppose if it is not safe, then here you can increase your rebar also, you can change. Because for bending, it is required 10 mm at 150. For that shear, if you want to increase, you can increase also 100 mm. Okay, so simply I'm putting. Okay, then your shear also, stress also are within the limit. So here itself, you can adjust it. Instead of increasing the thickness of the footing, you can, if it is a little marginally, if it is a difference is there, you can provide that uh, rebar itself, you can adjust it. No need to increase your footing thickness. Okay, that is also one trick. You can increase it. Okay, so, so that one way shear also, it will be safe. Then when it comes to punching shear, that punching shear is nothing. You have to check it for two Way shear. That if the punching it normally, if you apply a load through this column, this that B is again side of the column so that punching shear also you have to check okay so here it is checked through this at d by 2 distance it was checked and it was with a 0.25 since if it is a limit state method if you are going nowadays we are not using this working method we are using only limit state method then you have to check it with that permissible shear stress will be 0.25 root a you have to check it for 0.16 root FCK. So nowadays we are using only this 0.25 root FCK. So with that, you have to check it. And with that resistance also, it is okay. This is what that final result. So with that result, this is your size of the footing. And this is your bottom main reinforcement in X direction is 10 mm at 100. And Z direction is 12 mm at 200. So here it is nothing. Z direction is this one. So he here you have to provide that Z direction bar. And this bar is x direction bar so like that they will place it so the bar will be placed like this okay so this is what uh, that uh, isolated footing next we are going to discuss about this pile cap so next i am going to design a pile cap so normally for that pile cap uh, what are the design requirement? Uh, normally, it is required. We have to check the same thing only. Uh, the requirement is same only. The grade of concrete, grade of steel, everything is same. The only difference is instead of SBC, when it comes to isolated footing, we are checking with the SBC check. When it comes to pile cap, you are going to check it with your pile capacity. Because for when you are designing, you are having that pile okay suppose if you are getting a for a if you are designing a building for with some 10 story building you are designing okay for each column you are getting for example i'm taking some 5000 kilonewton uh, you are getting a axial force okay so for that 5000 kilonewton 
how many number of piles is required for that pile we are going to provide a pile cap so below the pile cap you are providing that pile above that it is a pile cap above that that column it will come this is that normal one so uh, again that based on grade of concrete and based on uh, your uh, grade of steel the other input is normally required is for uh, designing the pile capers you should know that vertical capacity because every pile cap every for a every pile we are going to check some pile test also uh, maybe you have studied in your uh, curriculum uh, it may be a integrity test so so many pile test will be there so based on that pile test you have to calculate that pile that vertical capacity capacity you have to calculate what is that vertical capacity required for that pile then lateral capacity and for that uplift capacity this is the normal capa normal detail which was given by the geotechnical engineer so how they were uh, for that isolated fitting how they are giving that sbc value how they are based on the type of soil how they are giving is like that they will give it for pile cap also so for each pile they have to test what is the vertical capacity of the pile and what is the lateral capacity of the pile and what is that uh, uplift capacity of the pile that from the technical engineer when you are design before starting your design you have to get the all these details so what is the vertical capacity then lateral capacity then uplift capacity here uh, there won't be any lateral capacity and uplift capacity so i am giving when that case will it will come as this lateral capacity is when you are uh, if it is a if you are designing your building in highly seismic zone prone area and uh, high uh, wind uh, prone area and uh, in that case you will get that lateral capacity mm -hmm. okay if you are designing your building in that seismic zone 5 for example if you are taking in that northeast tirupura this meghalaya and all if you are taking it is always a seismic prone area in that case you will you will have that more lateral capacity so in that case you have to consider that lateral capacity for your pile and another one is this uplift capacity uplift capacity is nothing for that the thing is uh, from that ground level normally uh, uh, we don't know about that ground nature any time uh, that ground water table it may get rise okay so that water table it will get rise so for that water table what we have to do is that that may be chance to uplift so your building that may be chance to uplift agarathu chances will be there so in that case you may get the better you have to get the uplift capacity from the geotechnical engineer so these are the inputs you have to give whatever here i am giving that shaded portion in that yellow shaded uh, that fill color that those are the inputs we have to give here we are going to discuss about that four number of pile caps and another one is uh, before uh, designing your pile cap uh, what is the thing is you should know is one is what type of pile you should know whether it is a n bearing pile or friction pile you should know see if it is a n bearing pile then this this distance between these two piles sorry then this distance between this two piles it is it should be a 2.5d okay yeah it should be a 2.5d if it is a n bearing pile if it is a uh, friction pile then minimum this Uh, spacing between the two piles, it is a three D. So this detail also you should know. Okay, and another one is this is that pile pile two pile cap that what code specify is that spacing between this pile cap edge to this pile edge you have to give minimum of one fifty mm. So that also you have to give it in that Excel sheet. That is offset of pile cap from pile edge. That is one fifty mm. So these are the inputs we have to check. First one is FCK. That is grade of concrete. Then FY is that is grade of steel is five hundred. Then pile cover. This is not pile cap cover. This is pile cover. So below that, that pile also we have to give some cover. It may be a cast in situ pile cap or under reamed pile, whatever it may be. So you have to give some pile cover also. So it is a twenty five mm here. It was given. Then pile cap cover. So if it is a isolated footing, we had given that cover as fifty mm. As I told you earlier, for that pile cap, we have to give minimum cover as seventy five mm. So that's what we are. Here, next, I should that 
maximum is required is four numbers that uh, that alone you have to calculate with that some other excel sheet and you can do it because see if you they told you earlier no this is 375 um, i told i earlier i was i was telling it was 5000 take some here it is this the capacity if you put which be less than that four numbers then you can take four number of piles if it is if you are getting like 1.2 or 1.3 then you can consider only two number of piles then if you are taking some 2 2.5 2.53 or 2.75 then you have to consider as three pile arrangement so based on that first you have to fix that that load divided by this vertical capacity you have to take accordingly you have to calculate the number of piles okay so here in this case is 3075 divided by 850 so here itself i am putting this 3075 divided by this 850 if i am putting here i am getting only 3.618 so i can't provide three numbers if i am providing three numbers it is fail it will get fail so you have to round it for four so that's what i am giving here as four number of piles okay this is four number of piles then pile cap width as i told you earlier this is you have to check this is pile dia pile diameter is 500 mm okay so this this is 500 mm this is 3d minimum distance it should be 3d should be there so here three times of d if you are putting 1.5 3 into 500 you are putting 1500 mm it is coming so center of this pile to this pile is 1.5 meters then when you are taking this horizontal direction if you are giving the same 1.5 then this it is with column it will superimpose it it will overlap with column so in that that's why in that case here also i am taking this same 1500 mm only okay okay sorry so 1500 one also i have taken sorry sorry so 1500 only i am taking so 3 times of d so 3 into 500 is 1500 again uh, this column diameter is 500 so here it is 250 mm again here it is from this pile edge to pile cap is 150 mm so 150 plus 250 is 400 mm so similarly here is this 250 100 mm so if you are adding the all three of this Strength of the cap two and three. So here also, if you are taking this is one point five and this is pile diameter is hundred. So two fifty plus one fifty is four hundred. So when you are taking this one, so the uh, the length of the pile cap is two and three. So the this is what in that input we are giving us two point three by two point three. Okay, then you will get the area of the pile cap. So this two point three by two point three, this is in mm. So divided by thousand, if you put, you will get a area of the pile cap base. You will get so that uh, pile cap area is five point three meter square. Okay, then this pile diameter is already we knows this is five hundred mm because based on this, suppose suppose when you are designing your uh, this. getting more capacity thanks to again the capacity also may be more when you are when you are reducing your pile diameter you will get lesser capacity if you are increasing your pile diameter then you will get the more capacity of the pile okay so pile based on that capacity you have to decide it because here 500 then you know, when you are taking a, when you are doing your uh, pile foundation in the Uh, 
uh, load it is coming in your uh, column and your capacity will be some 3000 so 10000 divided by 3000 again you are getting 3 point something so four number of piles sufficient so based on that you have to fix your uh, this pile diameter and capacity also okay so this pile diameter There is uh, mm. Then pile cap depth here. I am assuming us some twelve hundred mm. Uh, if you want, you can reduce it uh, or thousand. But for mainly this pile cap depth, uh, we are giving only for shear parameter only. This uh, pile cap thickness is mainly for shear. That is for one way shear and for two way shear. So this is twelve hundred mm. Then pile center to center distances. Again, that what I told you earlier is three D. Then column sizes. This column size is six hundred by six hundred column. Okay, so point six by point six meter. Then vertical capacity, then lateral capacity, then offset of the pile cap from the pile edge. So you will draw this diagram. This is a because in each pile we are getting the load. So this is pile one. This is pile two. So similarly, if your moment is uh, capacity also, it will come uh, same moment capacity. It will come. Let Uh, you are getting that put from your model. So this is for some uh, unfactored load combination. I am getting a load factor is one point five because uh, this why I have taken this load factor is when you are designing for your moment you have to check for your load factor. Okay, so once when you are designing for your pile capacity, no need to check your no need to take uh, factor of safety. Similarly, what you have taken for that. Uh, Uh, that uh, bearing pressure, that safe bearing capacity calculation. What you have taken is the same thing. Only here also you are going to adapt. So for checking that foundation, no need to check it for factor of safety of one point five. When you are designing your foundation, in that case you have to consider that your load factor. So here your load factor I am considering as one point five. Then is your axial force that is three thousand seventy five kilonewton. Then M max. So in that also you will get a moment. So here one moment will come that column here that takes moment and here it may be a based on your axis of your uh, software analysis report whether it is a is it or y. So based on that that M X and M Y moment also you have to take. Then next one is your self weight of the pile cap. That pile cap also you have to consider. Self weight of the pile cap is your nothing. Again your length into to thickness into. Twenty-five. So that you have to consider your self weight of the pile cap. Then next one is total load. Total load is nothing. Your axial force of the column then plus self weight of the pile cap. Both you have to add it. Okay. So both load you have to add it. Now the thing is. Hmm. Now the thing is you have to calculate what is the dx because when you are designing your moment. With that dx only, we are going to multiply it. So this is your center of the column, and this is your center of the pile. Okay, this is your dx. Similarly, in that y direction, your center of the pile to your center of the column is your dy. Don't forget again and again. I am telling center of the column to center of the pile is dx, and center of the column to center of the uh, center of the pile to center of the column is. dy in the vertical direction this is your horizontal direction so uh, dx dy you have to calculate again we are going to calculate what is the load carrying capacity required for this each pile so for each pile how much load carrying capacity is required we are going to check okay so when you are checking here So each pile force, each pile force is nothing here. It is a P by n plus or minus m x into d y divided by summation of this d y squared plus or minus m y into d x by summation of. Think your this total load. Total load is whatever the load acting from the column, column or the load again plus self weight of the pile cap. That is total load is your P divided by n is nothing your number of pile plus or minus m x m x is this nothing some seven point nine into d y is how much d y is point seven five into summation of this d into y squared plus similarly you have to calculate m y into d x into summation of d x squared so each pile you will get the capacity so if you take here. 
See here, it is eight not eight not three. Eight not three. You are getting for this pile. Pile one. In this one, you are getting eight not eight kilo newton. When it comes to here, it is eight not eight. When it comes to here, you are getting eight fourteen. Okay. So these are the pile forces you are getting for each pile. So it is within the limit. Suppose this pile, um, this capacity is. Because our capacity is exactly eight fifty, we are getting less than that eight fifty. But suppose I am increasing my load, three thousand five hundred kilonewton. Then what it shows? Check for five pile design. Because our capacity of each pile is only eight fifty kilonewton, but each pile it is coming as how much? Nine or nine kilonewton. So it is not safe. Then you have to revise your. Again, you have to revise. I have given five numbers. Okay, so like the likewise when you are calculating your number of pile itself, what you have to do is the load you are no. In that you have to take extra some fifteen percentage of load because you don't know about what is that um, sulfate of the pile cap. Those details you should not know earlier. So in that case. You So no need to again. You have to no need to revise your design. Otherwise, what it will happen is again and again you have to redo your design. So to avoid that redo, uh, before itself you take extra capacity and you have to check how many number of pile is required. You just check it. Okay. So the, these are the yeah. is also those. Okay, so no tension pile is required. So now, so all we uh, when you are designing all your elements, structural elements, whether it is it, it is of a beam or uh, it is a foundation or whatever, check always your moment at the face of the column. No need to check at the center of the column, but still some softers will give at the center of the column. But that it is a conservative design. No need to check. You have to check only at the face of the column. Okay, so at the face of the column, you have to take that section one one. Then similarly for this is for uh, uh, vertical direction. Similarly for uh, horizontal direction is section two two. So bending moment at section one one or check and bending moment at two two to check. So bending to check with that value. Then at two also you have calculate that mu by bd squared or uh, PT calculation uh, formula. It was given in that uh, SP sixteen and IS four five six also. Otherwise, equating that moment and calculate that the area of steel directly also. Okay, so based on that, you have to calculate that spacing also. So that provided AST is so your required is two three one three. You have to provide. This is a provided EST. If you want to reduce it, reduce it. It may be uh, they may provide it for because of to satisfy the shear. You can no need to increase your uh, main reinforcement. If if it is a two three one three is required, then you can provide some two thousand four hundred mm squared. That itself sufficient. Then uh, similarly, you have to check it for minimum PT also. That minimum PT, what uh, code specify is that IS four five six. It uh, it is applicable for all your foundation. You can make design for like a slabs. So like a slab, you can design for a slab. You are taking point one two percentage of BD. So same thing you can adapt it for foundation also. So point one two percentage of BD. So what is the area of steel required? That also you have to check it. The thing why we are checking this one is okay because sometimes uh, minimum area of steel uh, less than that minimum area of steel maybe you may get. In that case, don't provide that steel. You have to provide that minimum AST. Okay, whichever is greater only you have to provide. Suppose if you are getting more than that minimum AST, then you can provide as it is. If you are getting lesser, then you should provide minimum area of steel. So that's what um, you have to provide for your foundation. So this is the provided A for check for your one way shear. So one way shear is nothing. Again, I had to calculate that tau v also. So that tau v is again bu by bd. 
okay so both direction you will get that shear how you are getting this moment also in both direction similarly you have to calculate for shear also in for that both direction so actual shear stress you have to calculate okay then next one is maximum permissible shear stress so with that area of steel you have to calculate that what is that for that pt what is that tau c okay in that uh, pile cap the one is you can enhance your shear stress in that isolated footing code doesn't uh, mention that enhancement of shear stress why uh, for that pile cap is they have mentioned is because since all your load directly uh, when your uh, when the load it coming from that column it will directly goes to that pile it may not go to that uh, pile cap that's why uh, code itself suggests you can enhance your shear stress so you can enhance it no need to go for that more shear stress okay you can reduce your thickness also that enhancement it was given into that load from coming from the column will cause footing it will transfer to soil only when it is the same case if you take it for that pile cap all uh, the load coming from the column transfer to pile only not to the soil okay to the pile only it will uh, transfer finally that pile cap tip also you have to make it in that uh, only to stop your pile when uh, when you are erecting when you are boring your piles you have to fix your pile at that pile tip at that hole provide the steel. Now, uh, suppose if your pile cap depth is more, then you have to provide reinforcement also. Normally, in the you will get maximum reinforcement only at bottom. Reinforcement bottom only. When that uh, top reinforcement it will come as once if there is an uplift, that may be um if your case it be less axial with the maximum moment. In that case. That be chance of overturning or uplift. In that case, you have to provide more. Uh, you have to provide reinforcement at the top. Otherwise, no need to provide reinforcement at the top. Uh, otherwise, if your pile cap thickness is getting more than one meter, then you have to provide. Why we have this to avoid cracking? Because since it is mass concrete, if you are putting for a one meter, you just imagine a pile cap has some two by two meters. Two by two meters is just, it is around um, uh, uh, like eight feet by eight feet. One meter is around it's like three feet. Three feet thickness if you put it is a, like a massive structure. So there may be chance of crack or shrinkage. To avoid that, we are providing some distribution steel at the top. Otherwise, no need to provide top steel at the top. Okay. Uh, with that. Uh, Closing this one, uh, if possible, uh, in the next session, in uh, in future session, we do the combined. Uh, Divya, ma'am, uh, any questions? Ma'am, any questions? Ma'am, on quarrying, ma'am, for in file spacing, whether two D or three D is specific, ma'am. Is there any necessity to provide two D and three D spacing? No, the this is based on. Pile, yeah, pile or friction pile. If it is a end bearing pile, 
code itself suggests for a pile it is a 2.5d and for a friction pile it is a 3d see max thing you can go. because why we are code is suggested as otherwise there may be chance of pressure bulb so one uh, here uh, one pile will come then another one pile will come if you are giving uh, closer spacing there may be chance of pressure bulb it will get so there may be chance of bulb so it will uh, get overlap also to avoid that code itself suggest for n bearing pile as 2.5d and for friction pile as 3d okay ma'am okay ma'am shall we go for the vote of thanks ma'am Ah, okay. Okay. A respected and most distinguished chief guest, Mrs. Kavita Ma. Ah, respected principal, Dr. Yam Akila. Our beloved HOD, Dr. G. Anisha. Honorable professors and my dear friends, it's great honor for me to propose the vote of thanks. I would like to thank our distinguished professor, ah, uh, for making this excellent presentation on how to prepare Excel sheets for foundation design and make this webinar an interesting and meaningful one. Through this webinar. you have provided more knowledge about the excel sheet how to induce the foundation design through this thank you ma'am i would like to thank express our gratitude to our principal and hr for their support in conducting this program thank you very much for the participants for their cooperation and support 